A very warm welcome back to Spectacle Island for episode 7 with me, Mr. Sealy P. As you've already seen, the mowing of Field 7 is now complete. I've got my first full load in the least scooter market. Oh, I was that wrong? <laughs> Loading wagon, which we're bringing down to the biogas plant. So what we're going to do... So that's interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know how much we're going to get. Now, sorry, I, I was just looking at this, the um, the shoot for. No, don't drive forward. I don't want to have a massive pile of it because I don't. I'm not going to fill this side up. Not even close. So half the field's going to be hay bales. The other half is going to be brought down here and put in the silo and then once it's silage what will happen with it is here at the biogas plant we've got two options we can either sell it here get paid for it at midnight get our digestate as a byproduct over there all is good or we can put it in here which is a silo this silo is linked with the pipeline that goes all the way up to the main farm so we can access our silage so we don't have to actually transport it we can just take it from the the um, silage clamp there put it into there and then we can access it from the main farm which is pretty cool now to make the hay i've got another thing i need to do as you've just seen as we came down the hill the foremost is down here i've gathered together a selection of equipment on the field obviously we've got this loading wagon for taking half of the field off as grass I bought the high density baler over that's the Yakko high density baler by LDM Studios I've also bought over the fertilizer spreader because I want to get fertilizer over the field once we clear the grass off so we get maximum yield on the next pass if we look at our map go to soil composition you'll see the top bit where I've already taken grass off that's where our new sheep milk pen is I've gone over it again and I'll do that over the rest of the field so we get maximum yield next time we cut. So the baler's there, the fertiliser spreader's there. We've got a loading wagon. I just need to go and get the tether. Now, because I've already windrowed, thank you for Bear and Papa for reminding me about this. I've used this bit of equipment a few times on different maps. I think the Valley of the Old Farm might have been one of the earlier times I used this. And that was on FS17. It's the Vicon PZ Haybob 300 Tedder Rake. This is by 4D Modding, the one we're going to grab. And the beauty with this being, it's really small, it's narrow, so it won't affect your windrows because it actually kind of rakes at the same time as Ted's, so it keeps it nice and compact. I'm pretty sure on the Valley of the Old Farm, I used it on the back of the Krona Big M mower with the trailed lifter and then this on the trailed lifter. So I could use the Krona Big M, Swath, and then Ted all at the same time, and it worked really, really well. So that's what I'm going to grab. It should be under tools and tedders. The problem with using anything larger, if you've already windrowed, when you go over it with a tedder, it kind of it doesn't spread it out all the way out, but it makes those windrows much wider, then depending on what you're collecting with, bailing with, you can miss stuff. So at least using this one, yeah, there we go, 
6,500 to buy. 25 horsepower required. No brainer. I'm just going to get it standard, I think. I'm not going to. Do I want it with a guard? Without guard, with guard. No, we'll just get it as it is. Now, do I need to buy it? I don't actually. Let's lease that as well. Oh, that was close. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to, I'm aiming for about a hundred. I want to do about a hundred hay bales. Bear in mind they are high density bales, they're 6,000 litres. Because when the wheat field is done, I'm going to be baling the straw swath and we want to aim, because our, our limit's 200, unless we do anything sort of dodgy or nefarious with various different bale, um, bale making apparatus, there are a few about, then that will hit my limit. I'll have 100 of each, we should be good to go for a while and then I don't have to make any for a little while and that kind of thing. Now, do I have to, to open this up? I seem to recall having to adjust this when I unfold tether. That's right, it opens up one side a bit. Or do I leave it like that so it keeps it in a swath? That will soon we gather, I can't remember off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, so we'll have, we'll have 200 bales is what we're aiming for. High density, so that'll all be absolutely fantastic. Now, the collection of the straw, to, uh, the straw, the grass, with the loading wagon, I'm not going to... You see, saw me doing that in the last episode when we were collecting it, collecting grass for the, uh, for the sheep. I have also, the money's gone down a little bit, I have bought another 100 chickens, so our egg production should skyrocket. I am trying to work out a way of getting our eggs bought over from uh, Lucas Island. Because <laughs> the price from here is way better. But anyway. So yeah, we'll use this first. My plan is by the end of the episode as well, we um, need to deliver some propane out to some of the locals on the island. That's, yeah. again, just showing off something else being done on the map. What we will do is, just have a quick look. We have got to various locations. That was one there. Zone propane four. And then if we go to the Northern Island, we have got petrol, petrol and propane. So we can deliver either. We can deliver fuel or propane to various different locations because they require it and they have a lot of propane tanks and we're just going to help them fill them up. Now, is it anything different to the regular, but if we just go and fill up with fuel, Jim's had that on his maps a lot, where you can go to the fuel stations or a fuel depot, buy fuel, sell fuel, deliver fuel, you know. You can use it as, as an extra revenue source. You can just simulate delivering it if you want to have it as a storyline add-on. It's entirely up to you. And again, it's one of those things you don't have to do if you don't want to. So, like I say, collecting the grass, I'm going to do off-screen. And what should happen? As we go over this, we shouldn't miss any, hopefully. As you missed it, we'll go back. As you can see, we are tedding, but it's keeping that windrow nice and neat. It's not spreading it all over the place. The last thing you want to do is having used mowers that windrow, or if you use the Corona Big M or something like that, to ted and then have to come back and windrow again because it spread it everywhere. So this works brilliantly. And again, it's one of those ones. Oh, right now, that's going to be a problem. I think because I, yes, I lifted it, and that would be why. I was thinking, why don't something shoot off like that? This is another one of those bits of kit. Like I said, you, you, you forget. Have I used it before? Yes. Did I remember it was in the mod tub? No. You know, I, I kind of get into the habit of using other tethers. If I'm doing mowing, I'm leaving it all out wide, wide spreading, wide dropping, and then I ted, and then I win row. I'll use the biggest tether I can find. You don't often look for the smallest tether you can find unless you want to do a job like this. And it's absolutely perfect. These do exist in the real world. Who was it I saw using one of these? It might have been Tom Pemberton a little while back. Or oh, was it Tom? Oh, I'm trying to think now if it was Tom Pemberton or whether it was Flank Farms, but there was one of them. Because I remember watching the video thinking, whoa, 
that's a real thing you know I, I knew it was a kind of rake I didn't realize it was designed to do exactly that and that's what they were doing they were going over the windrows they were just turning them over so they'd dry out a bit better <clears throat> and they were doing a kind of haylage um, who else was I watching that was Tom Pepper on Dirt and Diesel um, they do mostly haylage bales and their haylage is pretty much exclusively exclusively used for feeding horses and they were saying that horse owners horse breeders are very particular about the quality of the stuff they get so when they make their haylage bales it's it, they have to be very good quality sort of conditioned as they go kind of thing now if you haven't watched it um, yesterday I put up a video oh I had a nightmare with it of the new Gold Rush the game it comes out today this is being posted on the 28th it comes out today on console it's been out on PC for a long time based upon the um, Discovery Channel's program Gold Rush so the PC version has been out a while they announced the console release and that got released on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One um, today and I got a, a key for it yesterday to do kind of to stream or something I wanted to do just to showcase it a little bit um, from the from the company Code Horizon. So I did the video yesterday, prepped it, edited it, uploaded it to YouTube, and it wouldn't process. I mean, it sat processing. Normally, my videos, even if I do an, an almost like an hour-long video, they will process at YouTube's end, once they're rendered and uploaded, in, I don't know, half hour, sometimes 45 minutes, it depends, and they have to process and render at YouTube's end in standard quality and then HD. Now I just used to post them immediately, but then people would say, oh, the quality's terrible, so now I wait till it's rendered HD, and then I put them public and they're, they're posted. They, they just, it wouldn't process. It sat on 0% processing, for ages and I sat and sat and I thought okay now I'm so far down the rabbit hole do I delete it re-upload it do I risk doing that and it could be like a minute away it could be ready to go in a minute it's just not showing in the end the video that was supposed to post I started uploading it at 9 p.m. didn't post till 12 30 just after midnight so yeah I ended up having to take it down re-upload it it re-rendered and oh, it just took forever but anyway yeah have a look if you're interested in playing gold rush it was kind of my first impressions um i know the fs club um if you don't follow fs club jump over and check out fs club's channel he does a lot of stuff on pc xbox i think more than playstation he's doing he's got an early access and he's been doing some videos and streaming on xbox uh so if you want to check that as well but um, yeah, if you're interested in what it looks like on... Obviously, I was, I was playing it on PS5. It's a PS4 game, but like all PS4 games... I'd say all, I think it's all. Most PS4 games, you can play them on PS5. So I was playing it on PS5. It is a PS4 game. And it's strangely addictive. Well, not strangely at all. It's designed to be addictive, like, like any game, really, isn't it? If they can get you hooked and get you addicted to playing it, that's fantastic. I'm thinking, again, I, I don't know where I'm going to find the hours of the day. I, I want to, <laughs> I've got this, I want to do the snow runner videos. I, I have just haven't haven't kept up with doing videos on this, doing mod reviews, snow runner. And then Gold Rush has popped up and I thought I, I, I do like it. it. It's that kind of starting from nothing and building up the potential of where you can go with it and what it adds. I won't give too much away, but yeah, jump around and watch the video if you want to. If you're not interested, you're not interested, that's fine, absolutely. But uh, might as well plug my own channel while I'm here, you know, that's kind of the point. So as you can see, I was collecting grass, the swath next to me, I put between these two is roughly halfway across the field. So I'm going to rake that half, turn it into hay, then we'll bale it. Now if we get, if we get more than that, we can get more than 100 bales. I wouldn't think so. At 6,000 litre bales, I don't think we're going to get 100 bales of hay. That's not to say we won't. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you again. Uh, we're going to...
finish off doing the hay. I'll start baling. I'll collect the rest of the grass later with the loading wagon. We'll get that sorted and we'll get that into the bunker silo. And uh, then I have to sort out. I'll get the great thing with that step deck trailer is you don't have to use it as, obviously as a low load all the time. I can use that as a regular trailer because it's got straps, so I can use it as a bale trailer if I want to. Which means bringing the wheel loader down, and I probably want to grab. I've you uh, now again. I'm I'm not reinventing the wheel here. There's no point. Part of the add-on straw harvest DLC, I think it was under baling technology. Yeah, were these. The B50 AR03, the B50 AR05, and the V-Grab. These for collecting square bells and round if you want to do round bells too. I personally have found, feel, they are some of the best bale grabs I've used. There have been various different ones I've used before. And the bales can jiggle around, they play up, they sometimes fall off. You know, I'm not saying they're perfect, and you may not have had the same experience I've had with them, but I might grab one of those, and then I might I might manually load my trailer rather than do an auto-load trailer. That said, with 100 bales, I really do miss that um, that quadro, quadro pack V. I know I've mentioned it before. And I know there's the Arcusin 4 stack there's also the various different Andersons that can stack them uh, I don't know I might change my mind and I might auto stack or auto load them I haven't really decided but I would like to manually I just find it very therapeutic so see you in a little while once this is done good shout on this bear and papa thank you very much Hey, bobbing is complete. So I'm just going to leave this here. That can be collected later. What we will do is I'm going to do a one run up the field. Again, jigsaw puzzle. If I'm taking the tractor up there to get the high density baler anyway, then I might as well do a strip on my way up. I've got to be careful I don't catch the wrong thing. Turn it on. Drop it down. Okay. So what I want to do is again I cut across, pick that up. There we go. That should do the rest of this strip, which was the middle one. And then I'll come back down the other one later. I don't know how much of either I'll get off of this. It, you know, the great thing is we own the field now. Once the grass has grown, I can come back and do the process again. Uh, you know, that's not too much of a problem. If I want to have hundreds of thousands of litres of silage compared to the rest, realistically, depending on what mix you're doing, if you do half and half, half hay, half silage, it doesn't matter. If I'm going to put, be putting straw into the mix, normally it's 50% hay, 25% straw, 25% silage. I need double the amount of hay to silage. So splitting it down the middle, not necessarily the best way. But again, like I say, what I can do is next time the grass has grown, do the whole field hay. It, it really, you know. We can work it out. So, this is my first time using this particular type of baler, the high density. I know there's Heston ones and various different ones out there. This was... I can't remember how much it was. I think it was quite pricey, if I recall correctly. Let's open it up. It's really nice. It's, it's part of the, garden, the modern fleet of... And there's, a various, there's various different options you can have on this from the Agco brands. I think we can have a Fent version, a Massey, for, a Massey version, but yeah, it's lovely. So I thought, why not? I don't know how that's going to work with regard to using feed mixes and that kind of thing. Whoa, this goes quick. Wow. 
this is not going to take long at all and judging by what we're getting I'm not going to get 100 bales wow this is rapid Very cool. HD baby, HD. I don't know if we can do 4K. Do we do 4K bales? Awesome. Oh, it's a bit down there I missed. I'll grip that later. Missing bits. Do I need to adjust? Can I adjust the height of that? Hmm. Can I adjust? That's two mirrors. Can I put those in and out? Let's do my door. Well, that's interesting. That is sitting really high. That pickup. I think because it's sitting so high on the back of the. Uh, track. That's going to be a problem. Ah. Didn't notice on the way down the field, but that could be an issue. Can't adjust. No, that's adjusting. I'm just in mirrors and all sorts of stuff. Ah. Well, I can find there, but just on an uphill bit, not so good. Now, that's not necessarily the baler. I think that's just the tractor. It's just the hitch is very high. I think because the track's on the back, isn't it? It sits quite high at the back. Hmm, okay. Oh, I'm missing loads here, look. Oh, right, okay. Well, that's something to bear in mind. So another strip back down, we'll check on bales created. They're coming out at quite a pace, but we are driving at quite a pace, so it's hardly surprising. There was an area, where did I see some hay? There we go. I think I just caught a bit of grass that I missed from before with the hay bob. So what I'll have to do is those bits over the edge down the other end where it kind of comes uphill is make sure I do those going forwards, going down and that should solve the problem. I'm doing it again. Pickup needs to be right slap bang in the middle. That's missed a bit there too. Some tidy up may be required. process is not going to take anywhere near as long as I thought it was going to which is also very good so what have we done now three strips a little bit across there and let's check on our bales created 11 is that all Blah. but then again they are 6,000 litre I guess so that's not so bad I suppose that's again changing your mindset, isn't it? When you're doing, when I start, when I was doing the precision farming stuff, when you do seasons, when you, you know, you have to change your whole way of thinking of doing a certain job because you've got into the habit of doing it a certain way. Now with fertilizer states, having two fertilizer states, and when you go into seasons, having three, and you know, precision farming, not going over the fields many times, and you, you have to change the way you think about it all. And that's the same, doing 6,000 litre bales, in your head you're looking thinking, oh blimey, we're not getting anywhere near the amount of bales, but we, you wouldn't do anyway. 
but your mind is like, whoa, hang on a minute, this isn't good. So, let's see how many we end up with, shall we? That is not still not liking that. Is it because I'm going too fast? Is it bumpy? Let's slow down a little bit over that, shall we? No. What is it about that little patch there? I wonder if I come across it that way. So that could get quite frustrating. I don't want to regret having picked this tractor, really, but... Mind you, the back of a standard action sits quite high off the ground. Hmm. Okay. Coming off field 7 with the last of the grass, we end up with 36 bales at 6,000 litres, that's 216,000 litres of hay. Not a huge amount, but it's good to get us started. I don't know how many cows we're going to start with, or when we're even going to get them, but it's good to prep now. Don't want to get the animals, then start prepping all the stuff you need for them. You might as well do the prep first and get it going. Now, the split won't be exactly 50-50 here because I did a strip round the outside collecting grass first but it's not going to be far off, I reckon we might be knocking on 300,000 litres in here so 216 through, yeah maybe we might not, it could be closer than that, I haven't actually checked so we'll see and then this will need to be compacted down and covered I'm not going to add any more to it yet, like I said don't need to at the moment so what we'll do is just pull to one side, jump out, and let's see what we've got. 251, so actually 216,000 in hay, 251 in, well, chaff. It'll be silage once it's compacted and covered. Yeah, did one strip around the outside. That's actually not bad. The split worked out pretty good. What I'm going to compact it with, I haven't really decided yet. I suppose I could just use this, couldn't I? It's got, mind you, the tracks are supposed to spread the load and avoid compaction, so I don't, I'll, I'll do it with something, we'll sort something out. What I need to do now is fertilise the field. Oh no, I see what bales are. The bale situation, I don't want to jump into anything too quickly. While I was collecting up the, the grass with the loading wagon, I was thinking. Do I get an auto load trailer or like an Arcusin, uh what's it called, the, uh, my mind has gone blank, the larger stacker, under bailing technology, the FSX 6372, do I just lease that, get them off the field to one side and stacked up and then I can come in and load them on? Or do I use an auto load trailer and just bring them up to the main farm and then load them in somewhere there? I, I wanted to do some manual loading, but in all honesty, I don't know at the moment. So, like I say, I'm not going to I'm not going to leap into that. That one needs to go back because I think that's that's done with now, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. So, what I'm going to do is take the baler back. Potentially in the next episode we'll get the bales off the field. At least they're done. What I'm going to do now is as I take this back. I'm going to grab the lorry. We're going to do some propane. Uh, yeah. I'll have to take this back, bring the lorry back down. The propane gas facility is just over to the left of where we've done our cow shed, behind those trees. And it's linked by pipeline to the oil rig. Now I know there will be processing plants and things in between that usually. But that's all good. Uh, yeah, brilliant stuff. Let me go and grab that. 
we'll take a load of propane up, get that delivered. Now I have no idea at this point what the propane is going to cost or what we're going to make from it selling it. I haven't checked the selling sheet or the sell point sheet or page or whatever you want to refer to it to see what they're paying out. I'm just going to deliver propane. Again, it's I say it's that kind of free money. Should have put the pickup up. It's not free because I'm going to have to buy the propane. I think at least I think I'm going to have to buy the propane. I can't imagine it would be free, and I should make a bit of profit on top. You know what I miss is like Mercury Farms and Sussex is the greenhouses delivering water to the greenhouses. There are, some, like I said, there are some transport jobs on here. I might pick up a couple of those because they seem quite lucrative. Again, kind of showing off what's on here. I think of all of. I'm trying to think now, really, of all of Jim's maps. This was kind of the most original, with clearing all of the yards and that kind of thing when that first came out. No Man's Land with the whole, you know, giving you a blank canvas, but then, oh no, loading wagon, I need it, because I, I forgot about all the grass here. I need to collect all this and put it into storage. Yes, I'm glad I didn't send that back straight away. No Man's Land, and then with all the placeables and the pack and stuff, it added in for you to be able to kind of build your own with the water plane a little bit uh, higher as well, so you could do rivers and ponds and that kind of thing. Well, again, was brilliant, I've come the wrong way, but it doesn't matter, I'll take this back in a little bit, let's grab the lorry. For me, it's Sussex. S Sussex had so much stuff, especially the, um, the FS19 version. So many things you could do, and all the details, and the delivering compressed air, and the contracts, and I know we've got gold on here, and you had gold transport jobs, and you know, and all the various different greenhouses and you put the lemons on and mushrooms and I, I do think for me Sussex is probably my favourite of Jim's don't get me wrong I like this map but yeah no, so I'm not having I'm not, that's not me having a dig I'm having a dig Jim I'm just, I'm just saying of your maps <laughs> that's just the way it's oh that reminds me I know I keep saying it and I'm sorry if I'm annoying people but um, I was just talking to Jim Literally 20 minutes ago, I asked him for something, actually, if he could send me over a picture that I, I might need to use. And um, something I said in the last episode, I said, oh, I don't think I can tell you. Or was it earlier in this one? Well, I kind of mentioned it. Jim's working on an update. He may not submit it for another couple of weeks yet. And all of the things that he's thinking of doing, one of them he may not do yet. But what he has done and is working, or are working, one... He's put tension straps on the loading crane, the gantry crane, down at the dock. So for loading logs on and off will be a lot easier. That will be part of the update. And the other is the fishing boat being able to transport grains. He's done that with a little silo next to it. So you pull up and you dump into the silo and it transfers that over to the, to the boat. Then you can take the boat up. We go to our... Uh, So at the moment you can use the barge and you can take the barge all the way up under the bridge, go right and you can go out here to the boat unloading station, which is something I want to do. And you can do it with various different palletized objects. But with the fishing boat, he wanted to do it so you could take the fishing boat up there. So with the fishing boat, I think it will hold 120,000 litres of whatever you want to put into it. That That's being worked on and should be in the update. Um, he is looking at, I know a lot of people have asked me, or have been asking generally as well, is there any way to remove fences and hedges? I know on Mercury and... Uh, was it on Sussex as well? You could either cut fence sections out, or there was a, a switch that you could kind of remove them completely. Yes, it was. Yes, on Sussex as well. He is looking at the viability of doing that, whether that will be in the update or not. But like I say, it could be a couple of weeks, don't start, you know, hassling Jim or, you know, when's it, you know, when it's done, it's done. But that's what he's working on at the moment, so that'll be cool. I said I needed, I needed approval, I needed permission to mention it, so. Now, like I say, no idea what this is going to cost. Oh, the other thing as well was, thank you to the people that commented about liquid storage up at the main farm. I dumped the water down the manhole and said, obviously you can do that. There is liquid storage at the farm and it will take water as well. But there's also the water point at the farm as well. So me dumping it, it wasn't the end of the world because the water's free and the water point's just there anyway. So that's all good. Now from here, 
we can buy and transport diesel, petrol or propane. So, yeah, I don't know what... Now, this is 32,000 litre tanker. This is the one that Jim provides on the map under miscellaneous. I think it's under miscellaneous. I've got some modded ones in here as well. Uh, they're Missy B ones there, but they don't won't take propane, I don't think. So Jim's put these two in under miscellaneous, the 8,000 litre and the 32,000 litre. We'll take all those things, including the propane as well. So if you're looking for how to transport it, that's what you can do. Like I say, I don't know what kind of profit we're going to make on this. We'll see. Interestingly, he says, tongue-in-cheek, the uh, very famous song you may have heard of um, by J.J. Cale uh, that he made, wrote and made in 1976, which was made famous a year later by Eric Clapton, who covered it only a year later, which is amazing. This was the working title for that that song originally. It was called Propane, but it wasn't really catchy enough and didn't capture the time properly, so they renamed it. That's the sort of thing that I would say to my kids, and they go, really? i say, no. <laughs> I could leave them thinking that for a long time. But the other thing as well, delivering propane, I'm going to go this way and go around parts of the island we haven't been around for a while. What I always think of, and I, and I don't know why, I do know why, but it's, it's weird how it always pops into my head. Every time I hear the word propane, I think of that series called King of the Hill. I don't know if any of you ever saw it. King of the Hill, about the Hill family. And Hank Hill, the dad, uh, works for Strickland Propane. And I was, I was looking it up because I remember it. I remember the series and, you know, his son was called Bobby. And he was always, hey there, Bobby. You know, it just, that sticks in my head, you know. But he worked for Strickland Propane. That series ran from 1997 to 2010. I had no idea it ran that long. And the creator of that originally had done Beavis and Butthead. And I think the other guy that worked on it had been on The Simpsons. So they brought them both together to do that series, King of the Hill. So yeah, propane, just sticks in my head, uh, and I always hear that in my head when I do it. I could have gone to the one closer where the horse farm was, but again, I want to have a bit of a drive round. We've got through the forest, sawmills out to the side, and we are going to come up just over the next bridge after this one, next to, or near the uh, gold the gold, the gold mine is the word I was looking for. Come up next to the gold mine. It's been a very weird 24 hours for me. I know you're probably, you know, a lot of people like, some Some people message and say they love the chat, they love the banter, they love the, you know, when I have rants and that kind of stuff. Some people are like, oh, just shut up and get on with farming. Each their own, of course, I'm not forcing anyone to watch, but Mrs. Silly P has been away. She's been away for 24 hours with all things easing, lifting a little bit. Um, she works in the pensions industry in London and she took the job when we were in lockdown. She had all of her interviews online, um, you know, all the various different Zoom calls and that kind of stuff. Training, she went into the office once because they moved offices while they've been in lockdown. Um, and this was one of, I think, one of the first face-to-face -face meetings she's been to. And it was with, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. I don't see any reason why not. Oxford University so she's um, yeah been so she had to go away for meetings stay overnight um, and then finish off the meetings and come back today so she's been away first time she's been away from the house well like any of us during lockdown in absolutely ages now is there a propane one just down it it just feels a bit weird oh yeah right here so there's one out the gold mine and there's one I was gonna go up and do the one up there let's do the one up there we, we kind of popped the, the gold mine the other day, didn't we? I am just very curious to see what the profit margin is, if we make a profit. I know some people said on is it Sussex they delivered things and had made a loss. I'm, I'm, wow, well, that's a bit scary, actually. Don't want to be making a loss on this. We want to make a profit. That's the whole point. Now, is it going to be ludicrous profit and then people will start saying, what's the point you're cheating? Or is it going to be a sensible, you know, I'm buying from the, the main place and we make a bit on top, transportation fees and that kind of thing. The propane tank is this one here, isn't it? 
Yep, it's got the propane logo on it. Hey there, Barbu. Right there, we're good. So, let's see, shall we? I am curious. First time delivering propane. Now again, I'm no chemist. As far as I understand it, propane is a gas in its a normal temperature, standard temperature. But for transport, is it pressurised or they change the temperature or it becomes a liquid petroleum gas, is that right? It's a, it's a liquid form for transport and then gas in your tanks at a regular temperature. Right, what were we on? 70 something, weren't we? I think we're going to go above that, aren't we? Okay, okay, this could be alright, couldn't it? It's not going to be crazy money, but we are going to make a profit on doing this delivery. Actually, yeah, it's going to be all right. Are we going to go past 100 grand? We might, you know. That's all right. If you're thinking of doing any propane, that might be the way to go while we're here. Just just an FYI, if you're looking for gold bars and you're missing one, I'm just saying, what you might want to do, grab your scuba tanks and have a bit of a swim around in the pond up here. You know, you might find something, you never know. So, grass field done. Some silage on the way that needs to be compacted, covered and that'll be good to go. Bale situation is swell. We've got 36 hay. That was what I intended to do. And I wanted to deliver some propane in this episode. That is tick, tick, and tick. Jobs done. Am I going to just constantly go back and forth doing propane deliveries? No. I will do one every now and again. I might do a petrol one next. I think petrol might be more expensive to buy in the first place. Not too sure. I will have to think about what I'm going to collect the bales with. Next episode, we will collect some of the bales. And hopefully our crops may be nearly ready to harvest. And then we can get on with getting some straw done as well. I need to think about another tractor with regard to pulling that high density baler because Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.